All right, so there is a lot of movement in the space of who is on first, who's on second in the electric vehicle market. We're going to break it down today and talk about Rivian. My name is Paul Barron. This is TechPath. We're going to jump into it. Rivian is really kind of one of those companies that has went a little bit of a different path. And that is really going after the adventure side of the sector. And I think that's a big play for Rivian because they are one that I would say is further down the development uh, you know, ladder in terms of being able to li literally get a product on the ground and do it effectively, potentially at a price that is somewhat competitive. And especially when you look at ice cars um, or ice trucks, uh, and I think they've got enough of a partnership with some of their key players that this is really kind of a company that could be pretty interesting. The one thing that was kind of interesting was the Amazon, of course, began testing its first lot of Riv Rivian automotive vehicles uh, deliveries in LA. Uh, it's going to work to fill a pledge, a pledge basically that's going to meet their Paris Climate Accord, which is 10 years early. Amazon is, is of course, uh, planning to back Rivian uh, along with Ford Motor Company in buying 100,000 of these electric vans that are custom built for Amazon Prime. This is going to be interesting because it's going to be basically the first uh, vehicles are delivering this year, and that's going to be a big play. The other thing that I think is happening with Rivian is, you know, everybody kind of wonders, wonders if they're going to IPO, what's going to be the kind of the position there? And if you kind of look at some of their money moves right now, what they're doing, Rivian recently raised $2.65 billion in funding from a group of investors led by T. Rowe Price. And of course, this is a little bit I won't say that it's abnormal, but the fact that they are actually going out for that kind of money kind of shows a little bit around where and what their plans are. Rivian plans to build a full-size battery-powered sport utility vehicle and truck uh, at a plant in downstate, um, which is kind of a, a retooled former Mitsubishi uh, factory. It's going to be interesting to see how they kind of deploy this, if this actually works and gets them rolling for production, it could be a big play for Rivian, and I think this is gonna be something to watch very closely. But with all the IPO hype, there is one profile, uh, one high-profile holdout, and that, of course, is Rivian. But their, their CEO said something very interesting in a recent interview, and I thought this was kind of a little bit of a telling, you know, a telling situation of where Rivian is thinking. And that was basically saying that their intentions was really to focus on getting the units and the production up to level. And actually, the CEO said, if you're looking to invest in an IPO, maybe you should invest in Ford, which is one of their key partners uh, of Rivian. And that is going to be an interesting play when if, R if Rivian actually holds out and there might be something going on here. And that, that's something that I'm going to watch very closely because Ford, of course, is the king of the truck market in terms of sales and uh, basically their presence in the truck and pickup business with something like the Cybertruck and Tesla and how fast they're coming to market. It's going to be interesting to see how these two companies pair up and potentially take on the Cybertruck in what I think is going to be a, a very fun thing, a competition to watch. I wanted to get Warren Redlick on the show to kind of break it down and kind of get his opinions because I know he's a big Cybertruck fan and a big Tesla a, a bull. And uh, of course, if you haven't watched uh, Warren's channel, you got to check him, check him out over on YouTube at Warren Redlick. Uh, check out what he had to say. What are your thoughts on how Rivian can come to market? Um, obviously, let's talk about the, quickly about the Amazon deal with their vans. So this is a pretty big. This is a pretty big deal. I mean, there are ten thousand vehicles. I think in the next year, a hundred thousand by twenty thirty. Your thoughts on on how Rivian can play into this? So I don't know enough about the the Amazon. I know that they have a deal with Amazon. I know that some of their vans have now been seen out in the wild. Not many, yeah. but at least at least a couple. Uh, I have a. I guess I'm. I, I'm at Riv, with Rivian now. I'm at the same place I was with Lucid before that reveal. Mm -hmm. that I'm excited about the prospect. I think a particularly important play is they're really going for a area of, an area of the market where they don't really have to compete with Tesla that much. Right, I guess to right. some extent their, their, their pickups would compete. Not talking about the vans for a second, talking about the pickups. Yeah. Yeah. They're really going for like the ultimate off-road vehicle. And the Cybertruck mm -hmm. is going to be a great off-road vehicle. But I think that niche that they're going for is a really good niche. And I think like sort of like hit them where they ain't. You know, if somebody decided to do an EV city car, Tesla isn't making that yet. Uh, I think there are a couple of niche markets. Lucid, in theory, going for that ultra high-end market. They're going for a niche that Tesla isn't really going for. So I, I like that part of it. But I just haven't seen 
I, I have, like I said, I have a positive impression of Rivian. They haven't given me a reason to doubt them yet. I don't think they're doing the ultra posh marketing stuff and the the the, the ninety the nineteen guys in suits end of the game. I think they're genuinely making. They're trying to make great vehicles and get them out there and put them in a position. And, and they've let people drive them. So I'm more optimistic about them. I haven't dove. I'm not, a, I'm not an off-road truck guy. So I haven't really dip, dove into what are they doing exactly. Um, the van thing, that's a huge potential market. And Tesla hasn't. Again, it's a space that Tesla yeah. hasn't tried to occupy yet. I think Tesla will get there 2024, 2025 at the earliest. Yeah. Um, and, you know. Amazon's probably not going to want to use Tesla vans, so that's a big market, right? Yeah, for so sure. I, 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 and I think that there's a lot of space. This is the thing. There's a huge amount of space for EVs to pick niches and to do mm -hmm. well in niches. And, you know, Tesla could make minibuses and nobody's there. Tesla could make cargo vans or uh, or RVs. You know, there's, there's plenty of room for people to do different plays. And if Rivian's going to occupy Amazon and provide them with 100,000 vehicles, it's great. Great yeah, stuff. it's a good, it's a good, good play, and I, I hope they're for real. Yeah, well, that, that'll be interesting. Obviously, we want to see kind of the whole scenario play out with what Rivian's doing in terms of their... I love the adventure network aspect of where Rivian is going because I do like the, the kind of the off-road aspect because we have not seen anyone, you know, really come up with a solution there, even though the Cybertruck, I think, is going to get modded beyond belief. Uh, in in terms of off roading and and what it can potentially be uh, there, I mean I've, I've even seen guys like uh, you know the fellow over at I One Tesla where he off you know modded his Model Y to do yes, an off road. It. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. So there are some interesting plays, but with Rivian they're actually planting superchargers in these remote spaces where yes. you typically would not take an electric vehicle because of just lack of charging capability. So that's going to yeah. potentially open them up in that area for sure. If Rivian can actually pull this off and they get this to scale, could they become the real truck player here, pending on when Cybertruck actually hits the market and to what point of scale can Rivian, because Rivian feels, I feel like, might have the upper hand here on delivering an actual uh, truck to the marketplace before Cybertruck hits? Um, I think Rivian could conceivably deliver a truck to market before Cybertruck is delivered, but I don't think they'll be able to deliver to scale, scale. before Cybertruck scales. Cybertruck is, I would I would guess that Cybertruck is going to deliver over 100,000 vehicles in 2022, um, and okay. it might be 200,000. I don't we don't we don't know we don't know how fast they can ramp, how fast they can scale. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen any sign that Rivian's anywhere close to scaling like that, and the 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 vehicles they're making are a niche section of the pickup market. And right, they're expensive. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if if Tesla if Tesla is going to deliver a fifty thousand dollar dual motor all wheel drive Cybertruck with amazing off road capabilities, yeah, in, it could in shut down the, that market. I don't know. I, I I think the market is big enough. There's room for both. Okay. You know, Ford Ford sells in the ballpark of a million pickups a year between Ford mm -hmm. GM and 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 Christ and uh Christ Dodge and and yep. the other players. It's probably the market's probably. Three, four million, five million a year. If Tesla's going to make two hundred fifty thousand, there's plenty of room. Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, I, that puts it back I, in the point of Rivian, where they could really become a huge player here because they're after a major marketplace that really is wide open. Right. I think they could become a player. Whether they could become a huge player is whether they can scale. Can they get yeah. the battery supply? Because those vehicles are going to use a lot of batteries. If you're going to make a yep. city car with a twenty-five kilowatt hour pack. It's a lot easier to get the batteries for that than it is to get it get a hundred kilowatt hour pack or 120 kilowatt hour pack that Rivian. I don't know how big the pack is on a on a Rivian uh, pickup. I would bet it's probably more than 100 kilowatt hour. I don't know. Just saying, I would bet it's probably more than 100 kilowatt hour pack. That means you need a lot of batteries. You need a lot of cells. Yeah, yeah we definitely want to dive into the Rivian. I, I'm interested in that company. I feel like they've got some very interesting things happening, and they're playing. A, you know, they're kind of doing in a to a certain level, much like what Elon does, they get into that 3D chess playing where they're going after a lot of different variables, uh, you know, to reduce their, that one, their exposure and, and increase their opportunity for success and being the pickup manufacturers, especially in EV, because I'm waiting for the first EV truck and the big problem, I have a Cybertruck on order. I'm not sure I'm gonna even get it before 2024, just because of the backlog of well, manufacturing that's stuck in there, I, so. I ordered mine in the first hour of the reveal <laughs> so I should be. I should get mine you should in the first, be in the first year. <laughs> no, my neighbor. I, my neighbor. If you go this way, if you go this way, my neighbor. Uh, uh, I have a neighbor like a, a, 
near my back, like the other side of my backyard uh, across a lake. He has a, he had a, I drove his performance model three. I drove his model Y long range. He, he beat me by about 20 minutes. He has a tri-motor on order. I have a dual motor on order. He oh, got his great. order before I got my order. in, so he should have his truck before me, but we should both have our cyber trucks within the first month or two that they start delivering. All right. Well, so, and then I, that, ordered we'll definitely, second, I ordered we'll a second. I ordered a second. We'll come up to your place and, and, uh, Hopefully get one of those on, on film.